very welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, most of you know our next guest for playing Irish rugby for Ireland and Leinster. He's also an ambassador for the Ronald McDonald House Charities, who provide accommodation for families whose children are very sick in hospital. Shane Jennings joins us this morning to tell us about the charity's very special fundraiser. And we're also joined by Brendan and Sandra Ryan, who stay at the Ronald McDonald House when their four-year-old daughter, Kate, is in and out of hospital. Welcome all to the show. And uh, Brendan and Sandra and lovely Kate there. Good morning, Kate. How are you? Give us a wave, Kate. Morning. Give us a wave. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan and Sandra, can I start with you and tell us Kate's story? So I suppose, Alan, our story started when I was 21 weeks pregnant with Kate and went to for a routine anomaly scan. Um, I suppose previous to that, I've had two pregnancies, two very healthy boys. So nothing was anticipated, no problems had kind of shown prior to that. And at that scan, I suppose, immediately um, a very significant problem with Kate's heart was seen on scan. Um, it meant a lot of toing and froing to Dublin, and eventually she was diagnosed with a condition called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So essentially, Kate functions on half a working heart. So instead of four chambers, Kate has two chambers. Um, so as you can imagine, that just doesn't suffice. So I suppose it's termed a fatal fetal abnormality. Um, however, there are um, palliative surgeries that can be done to keep Kate going as long as possible. So I suppose Kate kind of rushed into this world. She was meant to be born in the coom, um, <laughs> but she didn't want to be born in Dublin, that's you. Um, but she arrived in Cork a week earlier. So initially she was rushed, rushed to Crumlin straight away a few hours after being born and then had her first open heart surgery at two days old. So these are all her first open heart surgery pictures. She was only a dot, she was only five pounds 10. My God. Um, so that in itself created, created issues. Um, so she had, I suppose, she had a quite turbulent uh, first few months. Um, essentially, we stayed in Crumlin for the first seven months of her life, wherein she had three open heart surgeries in that time. So those surgeries, the idea of those surgeries, I suppose, Alan, is just to replumb her heart to make it function with just her one atrium and one ventricle. And she had. Um, so and then she had. She had a surgery as recent as last December. Is that right? She did. So she had a she, she had her fourth surgery in January 2019, and then she had her fifth surgery on the 9th of December this year. So she's just six weeks yesterday post op. And she looks fantastic there, and she looks like she's in great form. So I mean, it's just it's never ending for you. No. No, I mean it's all. Eventually, Kate will need a require a heart transplant at some point in her life. Um, we're not quite sure when that will be. Obviously, we're hoping it's more in her teenage years that you're looking at adult services at that point. But uh, we, we just don't know. Um, otherwise, I mean, Kate, has, <laughs> luckily, she's developed atypically <laughs> in every other way. Um, you know, she's, she's had no, no real significant delays. But for a child that has spent such a prolonged period of time in hospital, um, she's remarkable, really. And how do you juggle that with your other... You have two other children as well. How do you juggle those long periods in hospital? <laughs> I suppose the reason why we're all here this morning is Ronald McDonald House. And I suppose the, the answer is Ronald McDonald House, essentially. So I suppose the boys pre-COVID, obviously COVID has had a, an impact. And this time around, things were a lot more difficult with restrictions in the hospital. It meant only one parent and, you know, more strict restrictions came in then. And it meant that only I could be there and Brendan wasn't allowed to visit at all. And that was very difficult. And I suppose... You know, your family is totally split in two. When, when you have a child in hospital, your family is totally disjointed. So me as a mother and Brendan as a father, you want to be in both places. You want to be in Dublin with your very ill, critically ill baby. But you also want to support your two children at home. So I suppose the Ronald McDonald House allowed us to parent the other two as well as Kate. Now, when I say parent Kate, I suppose when you have a child in ICU, you don't really parent them. You just sit there, hold their hand. You're in, a, you're in the way a lot of the time because, you know, you're, you're, the nurses are trying to do things and mm. you're upsetting her. So the house allowed us to bring the boys up, to cook for them, to do um, whatever they need to be done. Now, homeschooling this time, obviously, is a, an added challenge. I mean, Kate it requires a lot of appointments and um, that is another challenge. But definitely the house, the house allowed us to be a family. And Brendan, tell us what it's like. What is the house like? Well, the house itself is 16 bedrooms. I uh, kind of described the rooms as slightly bigger than your average hotel room. Um, 
There's room in most of them for up to four people to stay. Generally, that's two adults and two children. Um, the, there's a communal area on the ground floor, and there's three kitchens uh, within the area, which allows families to cook for themselves and for their children. And uh, like the, we found the communal areas ourselves, it was kind of a nice gathering space for other families to hear their stories. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a way for you to kind of to vent in the evenings when yeah. when the children were all gone to bed. You share your stories, and you kind of found out very quickly that no matter how bad your own situation was, there was always someone with something a little worse off than you. And it kind of helped you to kind of put things into perspective. And it was a kind of a good uh, link with other families as well, which we've kept um, with a lot of them to this day. Uh, yeah. There's people as far as Donegal and there's people as close to us as Middleton that we've met in the hospital. Yeah. And Brendan, not only that, when you have all that, but obviously if that wasn't there, you'd be paying for hotels or rent. you'd be renting somewhere to huge expense to yourselves. Well, as we, we discussed this yesterday, um, life goes on around you and banks need mortgages paid uh, and only for Ronald McDonald. I don't know what us or other families would do. Uh, it's a, I won't say... It's a very reasonable rate uh, that they charge. And in that, you get your meals supplied in, in, in normal times. There are people coming in cooking for families every day. That's either a lunch or a dinner every day. There's corporate, corporate uh, team building exercises generally come in and they'll cook a meal for the families. Our um, uh, former residents, myself and my colleagues, have gone up and cooked for families. Sandra's colleagues have gone up and cooked for families. And... Uh, it mightn't always be expressed on the day, but it means a lot to the families to have that. It's another monkey off your back as it, as it yeah. is that you don't have to sit and cook uh, and it's just there and it's served up to you. And it's, it's so, so appreciated when it is. And I'm sure the families that are there can't wait for it to come back again. Shane, can I bring you in now and tell us why you got involved in this and how you got involved in it? Yeah, good morning, Alan. Thanks for having me on to talk about it. So... My uh, association with Ronald McDonald goes back a few years where there was a young guy from Kerry called Donald Walsh who unfortunately was in the hospital uh, with a severe uh, procedure and a friendship struck and he asked me to come over to the Ronald McDonald house and uh, from that I just got in touch with the likes of Marion who's uh, the CEO of the charity and just a, a kind of a relationship developed when you hear the story that Brendan and Sandra just told mm. and you look at Kate um, you realise how fortunate you are and uh, I know Brendan was talking about going up and cooking meals in my current workplace we go up and we try and cook meals once a year for them and it's just an association they were very good to me I came on the board when I was playing rugby just to educate myself on how the governance of a board works and just open my eyes a bit and hopefully my profile and the association with Leinster at the time allowed them to get their message out to the public a little bit more and since then I'm just an ambassador and like everybody uh, I think we're all willing to help charities that do such good work with this so my limited limited interaction with Ronald McDonald uh, is that but um, if I can help in any way and just what Brendan and Sandra said there in terms of reiterating the story, the stuff we take for granted, Alan, like yeah. having a cooked meal at the end of the day, the stresses you have, and I think it just provides such a good service. And um, there's a bigger term picture for Ronald McDonald with the new hospital where they want to uh, get a bigger house to be able to facilitate more individuals from around the country. But for now, obviously, because of the challenges that are there, it's running the house and it's running um, the operation um, for families such as the likes of what Sandra said and what Brendan said from Donegal to Kerry to yeah. Cork and from all those families. All, all over the country. And Shane, tell us about their latest fundraising effort. And I have the little bunny here with me <laughs> there. Tell us about this fundraising so, effort. So that's, yeah, so that's Barrow. And uh, as Marion will uh, understand, my Irish isn't great. So Barrow <laughs> is embrace or hug in Irish. Yeah. So uh, it's International Hug Day today. Um, ah. And I had one I can't show you. On Virtual screen, hug my day, yeah. kids were collapsed with it. So uh, the idea would be that because you can't obviously give as many hugs as you'd want today, you can go onto the Ronald McDonald website or mhc.ie and you can purchase Barog. You can send it to someone for a hug or you, uh, you can buy a voucher for a hug. So you can go onto the website, get a voucher for a hug and send it to somebody. Or in best case scenario, if possible, uh, a small donation will be so appreciated for uh, obviously all the families that are going there at the moment. But International Hug Day, 
you can buy the teddy uh, or you can buy a voucher for a hug and send it to all your loved ones, friends, family, whatever it may be. Yeah, well, I'm getting don't my... don't forget to put pictures up on social media as well. I, I'm getting my hug here from Barog. And yeah, virtual hugs. And we're sending virtual hugs to everybody. And I see Kate has Barog there as well. She's getting a hug. Um, listen, it's, it's such a lovely cause. And I know charities right across the country are really struggling at the moment, like, like so many things at the moment. But thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Does Kate want to say hello to her teacher? Do you want to say hello to your teacher? Hi, Kira, And hi, Amy. And hi to Noreen, her nurse at home. Can you say hi to Noreen? Now, there yeah. we go. We're getting a big wave from Kate. Thank you all very much for joining us this morning. That was lovely. Now, don't forget to support Ronald McDonald House Charities. You can buy your own bunny. Here it is here at rmhc.ie. We're taking a quick break now. We'll see you in three. <laughs>